Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and good day, beautiful people. My name is Kaya, my name is Chloe, and welcome to our private virtual safari, live from the Greater Kruger National Park in the southern part of Palule Nature Reserve, here in this beautiful area called Pridelands Conservancy. So who's on camera with us this afternoon is Marcelo. So who's on uh, FC, that's Final Control, this afternoon is VMP. So who's with us today? Let's see who's with us, Mary. Um, I'm saying Mary. <laughs> Marcel? Oh, Matthew and Marcel. Oh, I, I, I sometimes call Ma difficult. Matthew, Marcel, or Marcel, Matthew. Yeah, Matthew, he went out for some uh, filming. Uh, he's still not uh, back yet. Hello, Mary. Hello, Babs. Hello, Christine. Barbara. Sugi. Hey, uh, Sugi. Actually, it's uh, Matthew's mom. How are you there? Is Judith, we have Brian, we have Carol, Miss Misia. Oh, your first time here. I remember on uh, my live Bush Camps chat on, uh, on Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate that. And the whole team is appreciating that. Uh, hopefully we'll be seeing some beautiful things this afternoon. So I'm going through all the names here. We have Becky. Ah, Braveheart. We have uh, Wayne. Hello, Wayne. And oh, a lot of people, a lot of people. We have Prada. See you here with Annie. Hello, Annie. We have Temi Zulu. And blissfully, Masi M24. I'm with you. Hello, everyone. So I'll be saying my hellos to everyone who's joining. But hopefully, I, I mention your name. So if not, don't, don't you worry, don't you worry. I'm going to mention your name, I'm going to say hello to you during the course of the drive. So our drive will be starting at uh, Leopard Dam, one of my favorite spots here in Pridelands Conservancy. It's uh, right on the western edges of uh, Pridelands. Then I'll be driving to the eastern part and then going to Jovu Dam, checking all these uh, water holes or dams. And then I'll be shooting straight south, hoping to see all those beautiful things. This morning they had a line not far from this area so I'm thinking that maybe it went straight west to that waterhole because it's quite thick on uh, the flanks eh? because there's a beautiful uh, thick trees around it so lions they like going in those into those kind of places especially during the hot day they love being in these cooler places and they know that, that the waterhole these impalas they prefer to go to the water holes during the day when it's very hot because they know that the predators they are not that active and then those predators they use that opportunity when those uh, prey species go to the water holes and then also be searching for elephants i can see there's uh, quite a few traps of elephants hope, hope, hoping to see hyenas hoping to see a leopard i saw a leopard yesterday myself and, and myself and all thanks to, to Morris, I'm our tracker here in Pridelands. Um, on this road that almost so I'll be listening to, to the, the updates. Um, gate of the Air Force Base. We are across the 58. Oh well, it's going to be a twin fan in the next minute and a half. Okay, copy that. We are on our way. Thank you very much. Radar for Kai. Reynard, Reynard for car. Good afternoon, brother. Are you going to stick around with uh, him? Yeah, if, um, I'm not going to put too much pressure on him, but he is slowly mobile towards uh, Twin Pan. That's a slow. Uh, I'm sure he's going to go. Slender moments. Right okay, thanks so much, brother. I'm ch just left HQ. I'll be heading uh, down that, that side, hoping to see him if I'm lucky. Thank you so much. Art Peace. I can see you there. I can see you. Andrew G. Or Andrew G. Actually, Mary said to me, his name is G, not G. But I, 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 I like to call him with the first letter. I think I have something here. My eyes lying to my brain, and my brain is lying to my eyes. 
There's something here. I saw something that it uh, looks like a moving rock. Yes, there is something here. <laughs> Not a moving rock. <laughs> we have an Ellie. Let me put my face in here, just right in this grass so I can get a nice view of this. Yes, welcome back. We just uh, had some technical issues with YouTube, but we're back. That was uh, a, uh, a kudu, a female kudu, but it decided to, to leave us just before we went live. Beautiful antelopes. And there, you can, you can see, actually, there's, there's a few there. So Marcel will uh, give you a glimpse of these antelopes. Beautiful antelopes, and they love being in these thickets because that's where they thrive compared to the open spaces in the bush. So you can't really see it, but I can see uh, stripes moving there. So it's there. Can you see that, uh, Marcel, on the other side of the bush? Yes, Marcel is uh, grabbing this beauty. And you can see how they camouflage in here. And you can So I can smell, I can smell the epidem. So you can see how thick is the area just surrounding the leopard dam. So you can see there's this, we call it Tambwati thickets because most of the trees that are here they are Tambwatis. And then Tambwatis, they like growing in these uh, river lines or dry river beds, or we call them drainage lines. You can see this combination of them. You can, you can also see the the ball bean trees. Quite a few marula trees. And then yes, we're back. Oh, so YouTube is... Oh, Marcel is saying there's more kudus just right ahead. Now. Yes, I can see them. Whoa, beautiful. So this is uh, the species or animal species that we, we don't really see on, on our drive because they hide. So seeing them all the time, it's just precious. Yes, look at this. Look at this beauty. Marcelo, this is beautiful, but I can see that the bird, a birds hitchhiking. So these are ox peckers, so ox peckers. Uh, they help these birds to, they help these animals in terms of reducing the, the population of the ticks. And they will be helping them when they saw some, uh, they see something like a predator, they will be flying away and making some noise. And these kudus, they will know that something's wrong just around them. Oh, beautiful, they're so relaxed. Yes, Mary, on the badger. So you will hear uh, some clicks out from a camera. Oh, this is such a beautiful. So these are females uh, because you might think that uh, these uh, kudus they they are lacking horns. The males have horns, but uh, males say they, they tend to be on their own, but they do live in small little groups or bachelor groups and then when uh, it's uh, time for them to, to mate they won't be friends at that time they'll be giving all the attention to the females no Africa sky remind you uh, kudus the largest antelope no the largest antelope actually it's a, a greater eland so uh, elands are very very huge and elands are heavier than a moose, so, but a moose is much um, t 
taller than a uh, an eland. So greater eland. So you do you do uh, get elands in the Kruger Park, but uh, they are very very rare to see. So you find the most uh, when you go to the eastern or western yeah, Cape. Uh, Is that by brother? Can I, uh, watch your lock? My lock, I'm just right at uh, Leopard Dam, brother. Alright, copy. I'm gonna leave uh, Twin Bend now. Uh, this Kombi is mobile, kind of towards the west. Uh, I'm leaving Josh on lock, following him. Down Thank you so much, brother. I'll make my way that side. No, not uh, nothing, brother. Nothing, brother. Because I'm uh, just saw some few kudus. Uh, no sign of any any cat, brother. Could be there, thank you. Whoa, yes, I'm back. So I have a question here. Um, Carol said we have seen a Kudus a lot recently. Yes, uh, we are so lucky. Uh, Elan Zygote, yes, uh, how much they, they weigh. It's uh, the greater the kudus, the uh, greater kudus, they can weigh up to 270 kilograms of males, and then uh, the uh, the ones, uh, the other kudu, which is uh, a common kudu, I call it a common kudu, can weigh up to 210, and then elands they can go up to a thousand uh, kilograms. That's about 2,000 pounds of uh, of muscle. So yeah, any. Oh, kudus are the largest in KwaZulu Natal. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Marcel. So I'll see what's happening around Leopard Dam. I'll, ju I'll just throw my head in here. I'll just throw, oh, I'll just want to throw my head in here and see what I can find. But it, it doesn't look like there's something here, only the the birds, the blacksmith that wing. And a few, oh, I can see there's two there, there's two woodland kingfishers. You can see they just landed there, open their wings. So they do normally after they had a swim, a quick swim, because it would be diving into this dam and then they quickly fly out you can see this is a migrant it's just uh, here for summer summer days and then it will be gone sometime next month just uh, when south africa gets a little bit colder they will be leaving to to the central part of africa so what happens these are called the intra-african migrants so they don't, they don't migrate or they don't migrate uh, outside the borders of africa so you find those ones uh, called the polyactic migrants. They go travel outside uh, African boundaries. Oh, Marcel, let's uh, drive towards Njovudien, brother. Let's see what's happening there. So it's, it's, it's best uh, searching around these water holes, especially at this, this time of the day, because animals, they love coming here and uh, have a swim. Just like elephants, they love coming here, having a bath, or having a swim, and then they will be spraying themselves with water. When they, they leave, you will see them start bathing. So that's their natural, insect the repellent so they're avoiding mosquitoes to, to come and, and bother them and you will also see them scratching their body against a tree trying to reduce the number of ticks on their body
Oh, it's beautiful. The wind is proper. We just need of a, uh, just in need of a, uh, a cat or a dog. To be lucky with an alarm call. Oh, Jenny, what well, a leopard with uh, three cubs. So I haven't seen uh, that uh, uh, leopard walking with three cubs, but I think I've, I've seen that particular female was the one that rose oh <laughs> what happened here <laughs> marcel what happened why this thing jumped off so let me just put this back yes so coming back to your question jenny um there was a uh, a pre-recorded video that was taken from uh, elephant cam uh, this leopard was seen walking past uh, the water and then uh, the movements of those uh, cubs it looked like there were three so I also think there are three because of the, uh, the shadows that we saw there and the movements they were quite uh, dodgy a little bit if you can put it that way and uh, I always thought there were two but uh, that camera uh, showed that a male leopard followed by three cubs but I'm not really sure about that Oh, I'm not really sure of that. So what I will do is, uh, if I'm lucky, I'll be seeing this mother leopard and I will see if there are three cubs. Because if she's walking with her cubs, she won't leave a third one away from the two. So when they are going somewhere or heading somewhere, they will be walking all together. <coughs> Michaela! Yeah, yesterday uh, I, I, also, I also did hear that. I also heard uh, the hyenas uh, whooping. I, I heard the lions busy going, roaring. But I, I, I think, I think, that's what I think, because I, I haven't seen those lions, because they've been in here, then they, they left to the north. And then this one this morning uh, was seen uh, with Impala lamb. Carcass. And yesterday, I think there was no commotion, just that maybe those uh, lions caught something and then those uh, those hyenas were, were, were whooping just because they were calling for backup. Because maybe there was uh, some, some sort of a kill, and then one hyena saw, two hyenas saw that, then they wanted a backup. Hey, Squirry. So these rocks, I once saw a clip springer here. So I'm hoping to see another or that same clip springer uh, here. In these rocks. And also, leopards like to hide their calves around these rocky areas. So it must be. Vegetated around here must open our eyes very much wider. See these animals that are hiding around these rocks. can see elephant tracks. Ooh. Before we proceed, I saw this huge thing. Uh, there's no spidey there. I 
thought there was, there was a huge spider web, but there's no spidey. So that web belongs to a uh, golden orb web spider. So I'm slowly approaching in Jovo Dam. It's not far from here, just right on the eastern direction. So that's the north. That's the east. And we're going to the south. That's Hello. Can we get a view? Break up this this beautiful and it's like I saw best back four. Oh, I can hear you. Uh, uh, come back to you, Eskiwara Hall. Let's see this for two seconds and then we hear you. Hall. I think there's something interesting. We got to see you. Yes. 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 For the distance. This is our elf friend. So I'm going back to HQ. Uh. So I said this. Okay. Lost connect. Lost connection there. Instead of fresh and team speak. Always changes my my movements or my mind. Uh, why this Tim speak is giving me a problem? It keeps on disconnecting itself. Maybe it will be connecting automatically. Mercy, you missed an elephant. You just saw an elephant. Ah, look. There's a, a lot of them there. I could hear them from the grasses. Because they live in, uh, in big groups. Ah, 
ah, look at this bird. We we sing all this bird. Oh, oh that's a uh, European bee eater. <sighs> Marcelo, let's go. Let's let's go to HQ, brother, and see what's happening there. We might be having a cat. We might have a uh, a dog, brother. See this beauty because they're still around. You might see a few or a lot of them because they are flying above most of the time and you can hear them. But now we see all of the beautiful animals. Yes. So you want to see what are these uh, uh, monkeys alarming or shouting for? Hold on, beautiful people. I think you join in. No, I, I see almost uh, not the same animals, but most of the animals are like the same animals I see around when I go out here. But oh, I'm always happy to see them. Shall I'm happy to be out and about? Hold on, let's do this, brother. So we have to look extra carefully around here. And so that's uh, HQ water hole there. And what I will do, I'll drive to the spot. Uh, searching for tracks and signs of something interesting. Aha, look, who's here? Hey, Brenty. So Brenty went out very quickly there because he also uh, he had those uh, alarm calls. And then uh, while we were on our way, he said, let him take a car and see the check. So it's going to be very easier for us to track if there's something around here because I'll be on the north, he'll be on uh, the south. So I have to. So I have to be, so here's the HQ at a hole. So I'll drive here. So we're going to check, there's a, uh, a dry river bed here. And then I'll be checking on that one and Brent is taking the other route. So we see line C, O, C. Leopards. Let's see all sorts of beautiful stuff. So you can see there's early camera on two and three. And those monkeys are a little bit quiet. a bush on to miss a tree a grass here so I'll we'll also go and check at the boundary here there because it's a boundary on the north we're just right at the edge northern edge of uh, Pridelands so on the north it's a place called Chejani have called to Johnny where we don't have any traversing rights with them
got hit and Mike is still so I just wanna listen around and see whether I um, I get lucky with something. Another loop where on where he came. Nothing. They're still calling. Hmm. They're still calling. Where are my binoculars? You've got my binoculars. Have you yes. used my binoculars to see where they're looking? Yo, 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 don't make me beat you. Check where they're looking. <laughs> So I, I, I wanted to, to, to sort of check where, where is this uh, monkey? Where is it? They're in the fever tree in the garden. Okay. It's in the sea. Yeah, they're still calling. They might still be looking at the back, eh? Where that lioness was. Past the shed. Yeah. But I can't really see one. Yeah, of course, yeah, I know it now. They could be looking towards the shed. Yeah, so I have yeah, to I'll go. I'll check there for you. Okay, thank you so much, Benji. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> so the monkey is still alarming. me. So, what I will do, Benji, I'll take a look at that side. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to check at the shed there. Maybe it's where... Did you check where that lioness was this morning? Uh, it, it did pass by, uh, but uh, there were no tracks there. Yeah. Thanks, man. Whew. Breaking up. Okay, thank you so much, uh, VMP. Yeah, so, um, Brent is going to the other side. Oh, yay. Hey, screw <laughs> <laughs> Look at this squirrel. Oh, stay right. It's a uh, hind legs, a tree squirrel. So I don't know what he up to. Uh, squirrel? Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, scurry. <laughs> sorry, brother. Yes, at least we saw this squirrel standing up. So I want to see what I can find. And then we Hello, Josh. Long time, I see. Yeah, man, I'm here. Sit around. Hello. Hello. Um, are those monkeys stopped? Uh, no, oh. they're still they're still going. So, Brenty went that side of that uh, shed, on the western uh, western part of HQ, okay. where that lioness was. Are they looking that side? Or? No, he reckons maybe they're still looking that side because we couldn't see them from well, without binoculars there, but you can see they're still you can hear they're still going. Uh, so I'll make a loop that side and see if we can find a thing there, then I'll just continue with. Between the three of us. Yeah. So do you see 5-8? Yeah. At Twin Pans. Coming west. Yeah. I think you'll drink at Nglova Dam. Yeah. Okay, I will, I'm heading to Nglova Dam now and see what, yeah. what I can find. Yeah, I saw him, the last I saw was at Second Crossing. He was still going on Nglova South, still going west. Okay. <laughs> Maybe he will pull out also at uh, Zebra Clearing. Yeah. Like yeah. For sure. Thank, Thank you, brother. You, yeah, enjoy, brother. Enjoy. Yes. So also he's also searching and searching and following, following up on these uh, alarm calls. So hopefully we'll be seeing a cat this afternoon for a drive. Oh, there's a shaft cave there. Hold on, myself. So 
check the, the updates. Oh, squirrels are very cute, they're very cute. I agree, I agree with, with you. something there but it was just a dead branch <coughs> check up here see what I can find so I will be hitting Nervo Dam so I'll be facing Nervo Dam said that uh, white rhino is slowly walking towards Ndrovu Dam so it's a change direction from uh, southeast change straight to the west so that is uh, routine there mostly so hopefully we'll be seeing this beautiful boy I'll be glad I'll be able to see one not just alarming they are seeing something you just have to look thorough I'm smelling something interesting mm -hmm. I did it's not something uh, far <laughs> so now we're shooting southeast. Going to have a chat with that eddy, so I think it went straight east. So where it was, and we're going to catch up with him. Standing by. Yeah, there's nothing at the back of the house. All the impala are relaxed. So whatever they're alarming at must either be in that drainage system there, or maybe in Tijani. Thank you so much, Twenty. Um, Thank you so much, Brindy. Uh, I'm coming down here from, uh, from the east, down the cut line. Also, nothing here. Leader SA! Thank you so much. Yes, I painted dog now. I'm with Brindy. VMP here. So I'm uh, oh, I'm breaking up here. Yeah. Oh. Eastern Rocky Ridge area. It's bad for us. Okay. So starting our journey again now. We search for um, something that uh, caught that monkey's attention. So now we are looking for other things and more things in the wilderness, in the bush. Because the bush 
as all the greatest things that you can imagine. You will know what you will find around the bush or on the next bush, and you will know what you will see on the ground. Yes, it is a uh, beautiful quiet afternoon. You can see, and it's not uh, really warm this afternoon. And it's, I love it. I love it. So, this is a time where uh, you have to appreciate all the little things, all the creepy crawlies. And ah, oh, look, ah, oh, this is what, this is the period that we passed, myself. Ah, a, a European bee eater. Here, it's fine here. So, uh, myself. Let's try, brother. Let's try. Actually, so what they do so interestingly is that just like the little bee eaters, what they do is they. Uh, oh, I'm 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 breaking up. Uh, okay, thank you, VMP. Uh, where is it going? I think it's gonna come back to. No, it didn't. So they decided to go for another branch. So, what they do is uh, most bee eaters, when they're on a branch, they will be flying, then come back to the same branch or nearly at the same uh, spot where they, they were perching. So, it's just here. So, there's two here. Let me go to this gap between these two trees so you can get these two beautiful birds here. Marcelo! Here are these birds, brother. Beautiful. Frank, Frank, Rainer. Copy. Frank, I did find this uh, bus sitting down. The wind is first crossing. It's not really a visual on the road. Whoa. But they are standing here in the train. <laughs> What they do, they are looking for most uh, of the insects that they like feeding on. They will be looking for hornets and uh, and wasps. So you also go for for bees. And those are European bee eaters. So it means uh, they are polyactic migrants. They migrate outside uh, the boundaries of Africa. And they don't come here to mate or to, to raise a chick. So they come here to, to enjoy the summer uh, snack or the summertime with all availability of food availability of food yes so I'm still heading to Jevo let's see what we're going to find there so they uh, you, you find them most of the time they be like big flocks but flying far apart from each other, and then you'll, be, you'll hear them actually. And, and, and sometimes, you will, especially when they come, when the uh, beginning of, 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 of summer, you'll see them flying far. Then you, but you will, you'll hear them before you see them. So they fly high so that uh, you first hear them before they actually, you actually see them. So when the European beaters land, they're like, burr, 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 like when you take your binders, you will see them. Fly high. Hello, Tina. We're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. Still searching for all this beauty of the wilderness. Yes, Kosaran, love you there. 
We're heading towards Ndrevute. Ndrevute. Ndrevute is a Zulu Ndevele Swati name for elephant. So that place is like to be visited by elephants. So look at this. Marcel, we are on the main road. Just, just look at these tracks. You can see tracks. They are shining from a distance. So when you are a tracker, you just see them. Look at that. There's are elephant tracks. Walking there. It's easier to follow elephants. But even if they leave so much bigger tracks, it will be easier for, for one to, to lose them. Because you might think that it's such a huge animal and it's, their, their tracks are easily visible. They are easily visible on uh, like um, loose or softer sand. But hard surfaces, different story. So what's the giveaway there? It's uh, their nails. So they have nails. And then when, when they walk, sometimes they scrape a little bit on the ground. So this one was here. Went east. So I think it's it's having the same plans as ours. Going to every day. Yes, a tropper. We, we do have swallows that they're also migrants. So, you know, they travel. They don't just uh, travel from uh, or, or, or migrate from here to, to that city area. They, they, uh, they migrate for quite some time. And some they can take them about uh, four or five months to go to a certain place. Some they take less, less uh, the time. Because what happens is most birds that are, are, are migrants, what, what they do is they will fly, sometimes they fly during the day, some they prefer to fly at night, depends on the bird species. So, but they like to fly when it's during the day, then they will settle in a place for a next trip. Check there on these junctions. I go out. Yeah, actually, when I'm on a, on, uh, on on drive with the use I go out, you must uh, you must you you must be uh, helping me with with uh, the birds uh, department. What do you think? Hello Zazi, it's a red billed hornbill. So it's also this one bad patch over here, but hopefully it won't uh, react this time. So I'm not really far from the local den. I can smell it. I can smell the booty. Yeah, 
And I also want to check up on these uh, spiders, the spiders that are not far from me, just right at the junction here. So these uh, spiders, I haven't seen them for quite some time, then I started seeing them uh, coming and building their nests. So they're not far from here, and then there's a little dam there. Just want to keep up with these spiders. So if you are not a fan of the creepy crawlies, Marcelo, you here, brother. So we have these uh, spiders, so you can see the beautiful spiders. So these ones are called the uh, tropical tent spiders. And these are females, and the males will be quite smaller, and they appear brownish. And uh, they also will appear completely black, these, fem these males. And you can see what they do, these females, they uh, be building, constructing these uh, spider webs, or their webs in one tree most of the time. You'll find that maybe there's three or four or more than that in one area. And then uh, the males. So interestingly is that they will be starving themselves after they mate with the females to death. And then the, the, the females will lay eggs and uh, what they do, they can die before the eggs hatches. Or sometimes other spiders, they can be seen with their youngsters but they won't leave uh, long until that. Wow, beautiful spidey. So if you can see, if you can zoom back myself, if you can, if you can see that's a spider web, it's, it is uh, constructed horizontally, so it's not constructed vertically, so like a, uh, a garden of web spider or a uh, the golden hump web spider and so they are very small compared to the uh, golden hump so it's nice keeping up with them all the time Dark rocks, they, uh, they really look like things around here. They're so dark, you might think that maybe there's a buffalo sleeping there, but nope. Check the updates. See what uh, I think I see a woodpecker. Oh no, is that a woodpecker? Look, so look there. You see that? It's a brown bird thing. Uh, you see this uh branch? It's, it's looking right straight at us. You see, you see this branch uh, with uh, leaves. And then there's one next to it without leaves. Just look straight in there. There's a small little th bird there. Mm -hmm. This is an owl. Yeah. Yeah, it is an owl, brother. <laughs> That's an owl. I know. <laughs> it's a fully grown owl. So I thought you said woodpecker. Yeah, I thought it was a woodpecker at first, uh, the way it flew, the way it was flying, but it, uh, it's not. Look, look at that. Oh, look at that. 
It is an owl. So I want to check whether it is a uh, barred owl or a uh, is it barred owlet or it is a uh, let me go a little bit forward. So so or it is a pearl spotted owlet. So it, there. So if it if it's a pearl spotted, then you'll see the fake or the false eyes on its bag head. And it's called it's just beautiful this so. so I can't really see that. And we can see the pattern. Got it myself. Beautiful brother, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So if it's a barred outlet, then you'll see on its chest, it has uh, uh, darker spots. And then uh, if it's a, uh, a pearl spotted, it will be having some streaks around on, on, the, on its chest. But with this one, it looks like it has just what I think it's a barred outlet. Look at those spots there. Oh, this this weather is making this bird looks a little bit dodgy. Kim Twister, I'm here. I'm here, Kim Twister, I'm here. And so because it's so interesting looking at these birds, uh, a bud outlet and a, uh, a pearl spot because they both have yellow eyes. But this one to me, it will go for a, uh, let me see, dots, 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 dots. I'll go for a pearl spotted. I'll go for a pearl spotted outlet. Yes, I'll go for a pearl spotted outlet. Yes, a, a tropa. They are active during the day. Not that uh, they can't see. Actually, uh, what's so interesting about uh, these animals, uh, these birds, actually the owls mostly, they hunt relying mostly on their ears than their, than their eyesight. So what, what they do is uh, they have this asymmetrical um, ears that they hunt with or they listen to their uh, a prey, a prey moving. And that's why if a, uh, a jebel or a rat moves here on the grasses, if it makes a little bit of noise, it will grab that very quickly and they will quickly go to that certain area that, they, that the, the sound is coming from. And uh, they do have a K-shape um, food structure, which is called zygodectal feet or zygodectal fruit. So it, 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 it hurts differently when they grab their prey and especially when you look at the when you look at the, the, the eagles they only have three toes pointing forward and then they will have uh, one toe pointing uh, backwards so owls two toes are pointing for, forward and two toes are pointing backwards so that's why when it's on the ground you will see it will leave tracks that looks like a k-shape so myself, just right on the left and edge, there was a bird. What did, what did you go, bird? Oh, it's there, just on the water edge there. Not this one. Uh, this one is also beautiful, myself. It's a blacksmith uh, left wing. But I'm... Uh, uh, myself, I want to go to the left edge of the, of the dam, just right next to a tree there that's next to the... The water there, there's a, a bird moving. How do we, we, we had to see these birds because they blend in so well with their surrounding. Just ah, it went to the other side of the tree. That was a water, water thingy. Oh, it's there. Just go, just go there. There, there it's moving there. There it goes. Ah, it's hiding away from us. So, so those birds 
uh, mostly active at night. But when they see something or when an opportunity for a snack uh, uh, break up, when they have an opportunity or when they see or an opportunity avail itself, they will go for it. Just like these owls, they're active during the day. When, when they can see something, they will be uh, active. But they are mostly active at night because the gerbils uh, are active at night, mostly. And so it goes with their prey species. Uh, so that's why they, they will be active mostly at the time of the day. Because they know there's lots and lots of, of food available for them to, to hunt at night. These uh, gremlins are making my time very difficult here, but I'm not gonna back down. You're not gonna back down. Zyko, yes, it was a Natal spare foul calling. <laughs> Ah, Petri died, Andrew. Lola, how are you? So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to, to send my greetings to, to everyone whom I, I, I didn't send greetings to. Ah, Arla Ramo, how are you? How are you? How are you, brother? Sandy G. So there's uh, this, uh, my favorite uh, warthog leaves just in this turn side and then I'm, I'm hoping to to see my friend this afternoon so it's such a huge boy that lives around here so hopefully he's uh, yeah he's not here yet oh we're still foraging around uh, zebra clearing so we have this clearing that we are approaching now did you call him? Ah, he's not here bro. because when he's here at this time of the day, while there's still light, uh, he will be outside chilling. Or maybe you can see his face just outside of a tent. Then he, he will be slowly moving inside. So we have this vast open space here. So hoping to see something there with that uh, rhino that was uh, slowly approaching this area. So it likes to walk on this on this open patch here and it's it likes to to mark its territory and what happens is white rhinos uh, they change their behavior slightly especially when the winter approaches or in winter so what happens is you will see them from a distance in thickets in thick areas and you might think that it's a black rhino if you are not uh, paying a, a, a huge attention or a much attention. So what happens is, as you can see, these uh, areas, open areas mostly, what they do is uh, they uh, they lose a, uh, quite a, f a lot of grass during uh, winter uh, season. We have beautiful impalas here, and and what they do is that oh impala is horning eh look at that <laughs> look at this impala is horning <laughs> look at that sometimes you see them uh, wrapping their face on, uh, on the ground scratching where they can't really scratch, just between their horns there. Oh, beautiful impala. 
just uh, have to wait for this boy to do whatever he's doing. <laughs> Give a nice scratch there. Marcelo, let's go to the southern part of Ngilovu Dam and see what we can find in there, brother. Because this is where we saw a leopard yesterday. This area, just here. Yeah, so we're talking about rhinos. So rhinos, what they do is that they will be... going to thickets or thick areas. But uh, white rhinos, they prefer to be in open areas. Because what happens is there's quite a lot of, uh, of grass available in these uh, thick areas. So that's where they go and graze. Oh, there's a nice... Elephant track here. Yeah? So that's uh, that's that's uh, the other reason that uh, these white rhinos they go to these thick areas. But they don't uh, prefer thick areas. But they go there because of they are being pushed. Oh no, these open grounds. There's uh, less grass. Impalas are beautiful. I agree with you there. Hi. Yeah, for the Standing by. Uh, just zebra clearing. Come here, thank you. <laughs> I've picked up a wrong remote. Hello. How are you, brother? Hello. What's happening? <laughs> some excitement waiting for you down the road. What's that? You want some the excitement? Elephant and the big grumpy. It'll be really good for your <laughs> TV show. It's grumpy. Yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah. No, I just want to. Not happy. <laughs> He's going that way, this way. So if you go down here, I did drop a pin. Yeah. And then Kombi is there, and then Yari is there, and those grumpy pools in the same lock. So if you go to that pin that I dropped, just check to to kind of to the north drainage, you'll find the Slumbi of Nyari, okay. and then Kombi is just to the south. Just just between Lovu and uh, and Twin Pants. Yeah, just down here. It's not okay. And then that grumpy pool is also there. <laughs> Thank you so much, eh? <laughs> Before. Hey Brenty, what's the lock? Oh. And, uh, repeat that Brenty. Let me see, they drop the pin here. Uh, let me. So it's not far from here. We must be careful, we must be careful around here. They said there's a pool in must, so we must be careful. And where there's a pool in must, they, they said I'm going to be uh, getting a surprise animal. So it's not far from here. I'm 
not sure i'm not sure myself but it's uh it's an elephant pool as it's here but what we're going to do is that we're going okay let's wait and see fingers crossed are you ready Renty, is it possible that you pass by uh, Eco Training Camp? So I'm trying to look and search because they said there's something interesting here. A little must. So it's okay. It's a bit further, but not so far. So bulls and must just give them a uh, a great distance because they're just grumpy most of the time. And you know, these, uh, they just don't want anything on their way. They'll be walking with swag. They will be. And I think it was here at this pool. It is a rider. Oh, it's standing just still. So I, I hope that the signal is great. So I can see this rider. Actually, you can't see where's the back, where's the front. But the front is the one right in the bush. Because it's hiding. It, it is hiding away. Uh, I think I can hear the buffaloes. Yes. Yes, it is a, a, a rhino rock, but it, but it's not a rhino rock. It should be, it is a, a living rhino. Oh, sorry, man. It is a rhino that is alive. Yes, man. It is a rhino that is alive, and you can see it's moving a bit, and you can see the ears trying to. To see where is this coming from this uh, this sound is coming from this is a white rhino calcix it is a white rhino so if you can see the uh, the body uh, the white rhino is huge and it's a it's two it's about two times the, the size of a black rhino the black rhino is small actually a black rhino is about 800 kilograms and these ones they can go up to uh, 2500 kilograms and it's uh, quiet and it's a male
<laughs> yes, Joe, I agree with you. There are more animals, uh, there are more vehicles than animals today. And we'll be chilling here for a bit. See this guy, nowhere is he walking. So what happens is uh, white rhinos don't have a great eyesight, but the sense of smell and uh, hearing sense is like 100%. And then what happens is if they uh, smell something that, that's not familiar, uh, if I can walk in that direction or maybe I can walk not uh, far from it, it will catch a scent and then it will slowly follow it. Because what they do is if they catch our smell, they will slowly approach us, approach us and then just close the distance, they will be able to see us. They, they will be running away from us, look at that. So you can see it's trying to, to get the exact picture on uh, where the voice is coming from and uh, the scent is coming from. But now it's, uh, it's so interesting because we just uh, on the uh, great direction in terms of uh, wind. Wind is blowing from south, uh, from east uh, to west. So we are just on the northern part of that, of this rhino. So it can't really smell, smell us, but they can hear Kaya talking. You can see it's dehorned. So we, uh, in Balule, uh, the, the rhinos are dehorned. Because just want to discourage poachers because these are animals that are poached almost every day. And they can hear the buffalo, so not, not far from here, the buffs. can sit with the rye the whole day because we hardly see these uh, animals and they're just uh, precious animals. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very great to go and, and check up on these buffs, uh, but what I'll do, I'll just uh, get, uh, get a nice uh, time with, with this uh, boy. Let's just go a little bit back. We will be able to see him. Let's see. It's fine oh, Beautiful. Because I can see him nice and easy here. So you can see... Uh, do not move. Do not, do not move. Uh, can you buy Brindy? We'll be at Debra Climate Clearing in one minute. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm still with the Mukombi here. I'll, uh, I'll, get, I'll get you that side of uh, this. Kelsey, it's actually uh, animals. Uh, I don't know what drives them to 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 attack vehicles, but these are, these animals are, are are fully habituated, so they know that they rather s stay away from any uh, from cars or vehicles, and uh, we rather give them a great distance because what happens is they don't uh, really attack us or, or or vehicles because we have to look at uh, the the body language of the of the animal when approaching a sighting like this and you know that just that uh, we didn't see that uh, must bull you would have seen a must bull will let you know very quickly if it doesn't want you next to it or if it doesn't like your presence and uh, what happens if rhinos are, they feel a little bit uh, threatened they will just move away from us but if we if you do don't respect the that sometimes what they do if you get closer and closer they will start uh, charging at you but this is a beautiful distance and uh, they're not really worried about us because we found it not feeding not doing anything just standing so it means that it it's, it's not bothered anymore uh, it's not bothered at all so what happens is if an animal is uh, busy feeding and you're approaching it and then it stops feeding and then you stop, then it, continue to, it continues to feed, and that simply means it's in a relaxed state. But once it stops feeding, and then it, uh, you, 
it continually looks at you and stop feeding again. It will, that you must know that you must give it a, a little bit of a, a distance. Okay, Brenty, I'll be there in a few. Beautiful. Marcel, thank you so much, brother. Woo! Thank you so much, your white Renu. It was so awesome seeing you. And it's looking straight at Ndrovu Dam. So what will happen, it will be heading to that and towards that direction. And it will be quenching its thirst because rhinos they like to walk around especially when it's nice and cool so during the day they will find a nice uh, spot or a um, nice shade or a mud wallow and then they will just wallow in there and they just relax in the tree underneath the tree and then they will be moving and marking their territory when uh, the we or weather permits them to do that Welcome, welcome, beautiful people. Yes, Andrew, so fantastic to see a rhino because we hardly see these uh, animals here uh, because they uh, they walk vast distances and uh, Pridens is not a fence reserve, so it's a huge area they, that they, uh, they have and what they do, they have to protect their territories from all the angles because what happens, if they don't mark or patrol the territory, another male will join in and take over. And what's so interesting is that rhinos, just like this one, uh, the whole of Pridens, it's, it's territory because I've seen it on the north, I've seen it on the east and west and south. So it has uh, two or three, I can say three uh, water sources, like dams that it, that it owns. So what happens if there's a, a, a neighboring uh, territory of a male white rhino without water holes or without uh, dams. It will allow that male to come and drink, but it has to be submissive all the time. It has to stay away from its females. Pretty, pretty. Look, dagger boy. In the camp, this is eco training camp. Just imagine there's a dagger boy in camp. This is eco training camp where there's no fence. The students are here and uh, they know how to how to go about if uh, there's a dagger boy or is a potentially dangerous. Yes, pretty. Just pass eco training. I'm there. So that's a dagger boy. It's such a beautiful uh, time to be a student there, hey? <laughs> just imagine, just right outside the tent, there's a dagger boy. Big boy, hey? It's huge. And the way that uh, head is, 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 is going, it, it looks like it will be heading towards Mzlovutem also. Mzlovutem is pumping. So what I will do, I will be giving Brenty a remote. Because I think I took a wrong remote. And then we'll be exchanging remotes. Oh, I don't think we'll be getting a beautiful stunning sunset uh, today. But you can see the western part is covered with a blanket of clouds. Becky, you're welcome. Where's your friend? Welcome. Where? On the right side. Where's my friend?
my friend. Yeah, yeah. Stop, 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 stop. Oh! <laughs> they are my friend because they are not far away from that uh, dance site. So we'll meet you on the flip side. Friends? Oh, here's a green mamba, can see it? I can see the green mamba. The green mamba, I'm not talking about a, a snake, I'm talking about that green mamba. I was with the Nyamaza and the Brenty, sorry. What is this? This is the game drive one. I, I, and now Matt's been stuck, broken car on the road because you're making us wait. No, but it's a new I, one. I didn't know about this. It, it's a new one. No, I didn't know about this, Brenty. This is a new one. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yes. So, what I want to do is to try and go to the northern part of uh, that dam again because I could, I could, I could hear um, the buffaloes from uh, where I was with that rhino. So I'm going to see a breeding herd of puffies. Thank you, Carol. Oh, there, there. So this is not my dear friend, but I will also make him my friend. Oh, uh, what? Uh, friend? Where's oh, the second one? Here's the second one. There's a, there's a second one. There's another one, brother. It's gone. Oh, I just wanted to just say good evening. That was it. So you can see it was just right on its uh, at, at the entrance. Yeah. I just wanted to say hello. Stop, 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 stop. Ah, down the road. Yeah. Ah, thank you, Zaykot. Trying to relocate these uh, waters, these water. And we just, I just, we just wanted to show you the world. But he decided to dash out. <laughs> you can, can now only, only see the tail. Thank you, Lola. Really appreciate that. Yes, let's see uh, the signal we pick that, that side because uh, that road just right after um, drove to the northern part is not as, as, as nice, but uh, fingers crossed because I want to show you these buffies. I want to show you these buffaloes. So interestingly so is that uh, our lines here we have uh, two separate groups but very related so we have Ngati pride the main pride Ngati pride and we have the breakaway pride and we also have this one individual who belongs to the Ngati pride but she likes to hang out alone Lagetha. and then uh, these lines even if they are buffaloes in, in Pridelands and they're here they won't go for buffaloes they'd rather go for a, a giraffe because uh, I was with them a few days ago 
they had, they, they, they killed a, uh, a young giraffe. Whereas there's a huge breeding herd of, of, of buffaloes. So they specialize in, uh, in giraffes. And they also get this Ngati pride because it's big, has six females, uh, grown females. So it's, uh, they can easily take down a, uh, a fully grown giraffe. Yes, Canadian. <laughs> These uh, friends of mine are camera shy. Hello, boys and girls. Hey, Crested Frank, just move away from the road. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you ladies for for responding to Kel6. Uh, actually it's about an, an hour to, to Juma uh, from here in part. It's here it's about an hour to Juma because you have to pass uh, a few villages from here. You go to Akon Hook, Akon Hook, you go to um, Verferdin, you go to Fubukani, you go past Makrepeni, you pass Utah and Dixie. And that's uh, when you get uh, the the, the Gauri Gate. So a few villages uh, you pass before you head to Juba. <laughs> Prana, be careful. I must be careful of the uh, rock python. Nah. Pythons. Not right about pythons. Python are just some people. They they, they say that they are they are grumpy. Uh, but python is just a python. It will just sit there and, and it won't mind uh, me being around as long as I'm not bothering it. And um, just uh, the workshop. It's just around the workshop thing. So it's uh, it's it's not something that I'm worried about. I want to be living you know, with a spinning cobra or a mamba in the yard or in the house. Mm -hmm. This buff is supposed to be here. Because I passed that area. But I could, it means they're in the middle of this block. There's buffaloes. Just in the middle of the block. So you might lose me for a second here. What's that, myself? Is that a tree or an alley? So I saw something that looked like an alley. An alley tree. So 
Thank you, Mary. So I'm still trying to relocate these uh, buffaloes. And this is a road where we saw a, uh, a rhino. So maybe still there, we might find it while walking on the road. Masi, really appreciate that. Hello, spare files. Oh, Lola, do warthogs hang around with meerkats just like the Lion King? Here, in the Lofel, in the Kruger, they don't because we don't find meerkats here. They don't hang around. So when you go to, uh, for example, the Eastern Cape or the North, you'll find warthogs. But I've, I've, I've actually I've never. Ah, oh, this guy is still here. Look, look at this. This guy is still standing, still just here. Uh, so what's what's a nice view there, brother? What's a nice angle? Is it, is it, is it a nice, nice angle this one? Yeah, that's the. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, there. Okay, there's one. Okay. I think you can it. Cross side, goodbye. Goodbye, Mary. Yes, we still have our beautiful rhino here. So we hope. It's such. A, it, it's so great to see this behavior because uh, if you can see that it's in uh, thick areas now because you can see the, the wind is picking up a bit. So it's actually um, moving away from these open plains because. Uh, They want to keep away from the wind. So as uh, the leopards uh, like to be on the ground also or in these uh, thick areas when it gets windy because they don't like the wind. They don't like being in trees unless there's a carcass or kill there. Yes, well, as, as you're asking about your, your, your the warthogs and um, the the meerkats, oh, you will hear some some clicks there from my camp. Um, I, I've never seen uh, warthogs with uh, with meerkats, but uh, they are not enemies. But they do live uh, not far away from one another because, and they also utilize same, um, same uh, style of uh, of house of houses. So because they will be using uh, tamed mounds to for as they, as they are houses or as they are den sites. Hear something like I could, I could hear something, but I thought it was that early bull, but it's, it's not. So I can see it's a mouth part, it's uh, different from a black rhino, and uh, you can see it's very huge and wide. It allows them to, to lawn mow the ground, uh, the grass are very easy. Look at those eyes. So I wonder how pe why people and how they 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 have to kill such a beauty. Okay, Cam Edkins. Um, I'm, I'm in the Greater Kruger National Park, uh, Cam Edkins, just in the southern part of Baluli, in South Africa. Kimpu says so one. Yeah, Andrew, it's so amazing how the uh, ears move because they uh, they move uh, facing 
a different direction and they they move um, more than ours as humans <laughs> because if our ears could move like that it was going to be very interesting we could get all the all all the noises coming from different angles so you can see that look at that so that looks like a moving rock so you can see right on his around there just right on top of his tail he has uh, some sort of mud so what they do is they also do like elephants they go and wallow and, and look at that so when it's when it's alarmed or when it's uh when it's not comfortable uh, around you'll see it, it curls its it's, it's tail and then uh, the black rhino will shoot its tail straight oh beautiful let's leave this boy alone goodbye boy thank you so much eh really appreciate it such a decent time with a rhino beautiful so I'm slowly heading east So the musk bull, it smells, stinks. Look at all the, uh, the liquid that it that drips from its uh, penis. And it smells from the distance, especially when it's still wet and fresh, when the wind is blowing straight to your face. Yeah. Yes, Ola, we it just like uh, dogs, but these ones are uh, just making sure that uh, the insects are just moving uh, away from, uh, from their sensitive areas. Check this kepi down. The sun is up. My hay is growing. So let's check the Dervu Dam. The Dervu Dam for the last time and see what we can find there. Maybe those buffs, because I, can, I couldn't find them here. Maybe they slowly moved up to towards Ndlovude. Jenny, are we anywhere near Kwenga or the elephant camp? Uh, Kwenga camp is very far from here. It might take us about, you can say 30 minutes from here. And then, elephant camp, it's just north of us here, uh, HQ. It will take us about, I can say 15, 20. It might take us more than 30. I'll shoot straight here, going to a boundary, then I'll go straight to Quangan. Yeah, it might take us 30. To HQ, it might take us about 20. So Quangan, we're not driving there because it's... We don't really have nice signal there, but the VM is still testing there's uh, possible areas where the signal might might be and yeah maybe in future we'll be driving at Quenga nose I always keep that positive vibe all the time let's just listen and watch this beautiful dam which is called Ndlovu Dam so nothing is really here except the birds and terrapins that you might see popping their heads out and I'm using my binders to be oh at least we have impalas right on the left and part of the dam just at the back of that um, huge bush
Marcel, mm. you know, I always thought that we, uh, we also lost the second uh, lap wing, that blacksmith lap wing's cheek, but I can see it now. Uh, do you see that tree in the middle there? This is the first tree there, a huge one, the, se the second one and the third one there. Just right in the middle when you come to this uh, greener patch on, on the ground there. There is a, uh, a check piece running there. So where are you now? Where did you go? Oh, you see that... Uh... Yeah, there! There, Marcel, there! <laughs> the chick is alive! So it's been uh, quite a, a, a while not seeing this chick, but it is alive. That's a blacksmith lip wings chick. Ralph M asking about uh, the white rhinos. White rhinos are um, herd animals, but what they do is they don't, they don't uh, form these huge herds like uh, buffaloes and elephants. And uh, these males, they will be joining up with the females and uh, or their wives, or maybe two or three or four wives with their offspring. And then, um, yeah, they'll keep it small, but uh, what happens is that these females, that they, they form a, uh, a family, a small family. They will be sometimes on, uh, on, their, be on their own in, the, in, in that uh, territory. And then the, the males will also wander on their own, marking his territory, protecting those females. And then, yeah, they, you, they will join together at, at times, and they, they just like spending time together. And you will see these females, uh, these sub-adult females, when they, uh, the mother white rhino gives birth to a new calf, uh, it will push that older one away and then they will be allowed to come and visit. But the boys are not allowed to come and visit mom. So if the, the territory is not far away from mom, No, Jenny, not Taylor, it was a student. Yeah, it did sound, it's, it's sound like hair. So we'll see these birds bashing on these other animals, especially when they come close to your nest or this chick, and you will see them flying straight to an elephant or flying straight to, to other ducks or geese around here. Marcelo, mm. I thought I was going to be seeing something very interesting here, but I did see a chick. But what I'll do, I'll slowly drive North. That buff, that eco training, if it's still there, let's, uh, let's go and say hi to, to, to that buff and hopefully we'll be seeing it. And we can see why they call them Daga Boys. Because that one was covered in mud. Daga boy. Daga means mud. I don't think he's still going to be around here. Oh, there. <laughs> he's still there. No, it's just on the lawn there. So there's uh, people, I'm, I'm sure the students are going to be eating there. So that's the Daga boy still there. And here. Yeah. The students 
just arrived. I'm going myself. Oh, thank you, Kilo. Thank you for sticking up uh, around until this time of the drive. So it's about yeah time for me to head back home and have a beautiful supper. Yes, and it's getting chilly at night. And yes, beautiful people. I will just stop there by the Changshin. Who knows? You might be seeing something there. Then I send my goodbyes. Well, it was such a beautiful, 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 phenomenal drive. It was a beautiful, exciting drive. And thank you so much for joining. And thank you so, so much for your questions and comments. Thank you so much for for watching until this uh, time of a drive. And uh, today actually it was uh, interesting because it was a free drive, but it went over about two hours. Lucky, lucky. Yes, thank you uh, for for such a beautiful wilderness to give us all these beautiful things. The rhinos, the elephants, uh, the birds, uh, the insects. Oh, antelopes, beautiful. It's beautiful skies, but beautiful bush, beautiful grasses, the soil. The clouds. Marcel, thank you so much for close up, brother. Thank you so much for your beautiful camera work. Thank you so much, Brian, um, in FC, brother. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'll be preparing for a drive for, uh, tomorrow morning. I uh, pay drive, a private virtual safari, live from here. And then, yeah, have a great weekend. If you're not joining a drive, any drive this weekend, please uh, do that to still have seats available and uh, if you won't be joining a drive have a splendid fantastic weekend stay blessed safe and healthy kaya loves you all and the painted dog team says goodbye